Hey guys, what's going on? Kel back here yet again, representing the 40 Call YouTube channel, bringing you yet another video, Warhammer 40,000 related. And today it's going to be a faction focus on the Necrons, including new rules, backstory, and more. Um, but before we get onto that, as always, we'd like to give a shout out to anyone who has subscribed and liked and commented on the videos in the past sort of 24, 48 hours. Thank you very much, guys. Um, your names haven't popped up yet. We're currently having a couple of issues looking at the names of new subs, but once we do, we will give you all a shout out once we can see your names. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. We post Warhammer 40,000 content every single day, sometimes more than once a day. Um, especially on days like today when we've had multiple articles drop. Um, if you like Warhammer 40,000, including uh, news, reviews, hints, tips, painting videos, and Warhammer 40,000 uh, battle reports, um, you know, subscribe to the channel, and we do all those kinds of videos um, in the future. Um, but yeah, going back to the video today, it's going to be a faction focus on the Necrons. We're going to have a quick look through together, quick review, and see what we think. So. It starts with, welcome to the first installment of our new Faction Focus series. Over the coming days and weeks, we'll be introducing each of Warhammer 40,000's uh, war and ra races and offering some hints and tips to get uh, your existing armies ready for the new edition. To kick things off, we'll be discussing the Necrons, uh, stars uh, of the awesome Indominus box set, uh, amply assisted by expert playtester, Werner Born. Werner Born? I almost called him Wiener. That's really bad. I almost called him Wiener Born. Oh dear. Anyway, it's Werner Born. <laughs> um, but as you can see, there's a little picture here. We've got some of the old school Necrons, uh, some Lynch Guard, um, some Resurrection Arcs, um, fighting some Orgrins, I think, um, and the Astra Militarum, um, and a Commissar there at the bottom with his sword and plasma pistol. So, who are they? The Necrons are an ancient machine race whose alliance with the godlike Catan uh, and mastery of hyper-advanced technologies saw their civilization rule the stars. Yet after a bitter conflict with Eldari known as the War in Heaven, the Necron Empire was finally humbled. Now, after millennia of slumber, the time has come for the Necrons to rise up once more and reclaim that which was once theirs even if doing means the exterminating all sentient life in the galaxy. As you say there, we've got uh, the Necrons uh, with the Kitan, which I think, it's not the Shard of the Deceiver. Oh, the guy at the back with the sigh. Can't remember his name. Anyway, it's one of, it's, it's one of the Kitan, or Satan, or Satan, or whatever you have, you know, I pronounce it Kitan, anyway, uh, fighting um, the Eldar there, and it looks like they're putting the hurt on the Eldar, which is good. Because although I'm uh, a follower of the Emperor and his um, glorious um, Emperor and um, humanity, uh, um, I don't particularly like the Eldar. Don't really first. I'd, I prefer the Necrons over the Eldar. I know that much. Anyway, <laughs> uh, how they play in the new edition? Well, uh, we'll hand over uh, to Overlord uh, Werner Born, who helped put the deadly machine warriors through their paces during development. Uh, it's a hardened veteran. Uh, of the tournament scene with his Necron Legion and Team USA coach for the ETC, it's fair to say he knows his stuff. He'll be giving us some insights as to how they'll play in the new edition and which units will help you uh, in cause for galactic domination. So it opens with some commentary from Werner here. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Werner from the Mornival, Mornival Player Testing Group. Uh, while I'm playing a variety of armies over the years, Necrons have long been my favourite for match play. With some heavy reinforcements around the corner <clears throat> for our beloved machine empire, there's never been a better time to be a Necron player. Very true. I'm, I'm very excited for the Necron stuff, to be honest. Um, even before those reinforcements arrive, though, there's a lot to be excited about for Necrons going into the new edition, so it's time to awaken those tombs. And we've got some pictures here of some wraiths, um, cryptic, uh, some lynch guard, I think, some warriors, bodyguards, and those are going up against the um, uh, the mechanicus, Depth mechanicus. And in the in the back, we've got some death strikers, I think, what they're called. On the on the left hand side, there next to the cryptic, they're like the um, the scouts of the Necron race. 
So one of the biggest improvements for the Necrons is they no longer uh, be hurting for command points, which is safe, which is true. The, the, the Necron army has always suffered when it comes to command points. Uh, without uh, eyes or a cheap uh, minimalist battalion detachment at their disposal, Necrons were traditionally one of the factions that had a tough time starting games with uh, lots of CP. Very true. However, in the new edition, they'll have more command points to work with than ever. A significant boost that will put them on a level playing field uh, to the other armies when it comes to the number of stratagems they can employ. Good. It was a big complaint uh, about Necrons for a lot of years. Uh, I'm glad to say they're getting some love. So even beyond the changes uh, of Battleforged army structure, there are a number of other key changes in the new edition that will affect Necrons for the better. Vehicles are already a, a mainstay of many Necron armies, but they're about to get even better. With all vehicles able to move and fire heavy weapons without penalty, you'll be able to pull off some powerful combinations. For example, getting within range to make the most of the devastating firepower of your Mephrid dynasty has never been easier. So we've got the Mephrid Solar Fury. So this must be a new, um, new ability for the Mephrid dynasty. The Mephrid have harnessed the power... <laughs> of captive sons, as you do, to power their weapons. Uh, this raging solar energy can see it through even the thickest armor with ease. So what have we got here? Each time a model with this code shoots an enemy unit that is within his half range of the weapon's maximum range, the armor penetration characteristic of the weapon's attack is improved by one, i.e. armor penetration characteristic of zero becomes minus one, minus one becomes minus two, etc. Okay, cool. So as long as you're within half range of the shooting weapons, you get an extra uh, minus one to AP. That's good. Some of the, the Necron weapons have really long range as well. You're talking like 72 inches. So if you're getting in with, the, you know, up to like 30 inches away, and you're, and you're still going to get that little bit more punch, uh, which is really cool. And um, things like destroyers. Destroyers have got like a really good range, like a 36 inch range, I think. So if you're within 18 inches, um, you're going to get that extra minus one to penetration just for taking uh, the, the Mephrid Dynasty. Okay. With the updated rules for aircraft in the new edition, Necron flyers will, be, will no longer fear having uh, their movement blocked by units on the ground. And they will also be able to move uh, back onto the battlefield in a later turn should they leave the combat airspace. Personally, I like to play a attractive game and Necrons uh, are well equipped for that strategy, though their combination of deceptive speed and, big, and a big bag of tricks. They pack the firepower to take down any threat as needed, but because many of their units have a 24 inch range, they have to be, uh, they have to carefully consider target priority. Sometimes you need to settle for a secondary choice and let the biggest threat in your opponent's army live for an extra turn so that you don't uh, overcommit early. And it goes on to key units. So the Necrons are already blessed with a number of devastatingly powerful units and they're set to receive some serious brutal reinforcements in the near future too. Here are some great units to look out for in the new edition. And we've got the Catan Shard of the Deceiver. Um, this model's been out um, a long time now. Um, this is one of the Catan Shards that's been out, ooh, a really, really long time. I'm struggling to think how long it's been now. Um, but the, the Shard of the Deceiver um, is, is a powerful model. Um, on the board, it comes with a whole host of tricks and psychic shenanigans, and it, it's good to see them fielded in games. So, Werner, always a popular inclusion in the tournament, seeing the shard, the Catan Shard of the Deceiver, remains a great building block to include in your army due to its grand illusion ability. It's complementary to loads of different unit choices available to the Necrons, and trust me when I tell you, it's even more valuable in the new missions. So we've got Grand Illusion. At the beginning of the first battle round, but before the first uh, turn begins, you can remove uh, the Catan Shard of the Deceiver and up to D3 other friendly Necron units from the battlefield. Then set them up again more than 12 inches away from any models. If you do so, these units cannot charge in your first turn. All right, okay. And now that's interesting. If you combine that with... Um, some of the new Necron weapons that the Warriors might have, and you might be able to pick up the Shard of the Catan, couple of units of Warriors, and drop them within half range um, at the beginning 
first turn. So you're going to get that extra minus one to AP. So you don't have to slowly walk the Necrons up the board. You can kind of like warp them um, within 12 inches. So as long as your gun is like has a full 24 inch range, you get within 12 inches, you win half range and you get minus one to AP. Okay, cool. Like that. Goes well with the army. And we have a Doom Psy. Doom Psy. I love this. I love this model. Such a cool looking flyer, man. Especially with that big, like, um, crystal cannon that, that's on the bottom. I always forget the name of it, but... Oh, what's it called? I'm trying to think now. I'm trying to wreck my brain. It'll come back to us. But anyway, cool looking model. And let's see what kind of new rules it gets. So, Werner. Uh, in the absence of dedicated uh, indirect fire units, the best way to literally get around line of sight blocking terrain is by making use of the mirror movements ability that Necrons have at their disposal. The Doom Psy in particular can use its speed and freedom of movement to get eyes on a valuable target from across the table, then obliterate it with a death ray. What's more, as a blast weapon, the death ray will be effective against large enemy units as well as enemy vehicles. You'll automatically get your maximum uh, of three shots against units of six or more, which is great for zapping space marines. Okay. And we've got the death ray, which is range 24. It's a heavy D3 shots. And yet, like I said before, you'll probably be getting your top three shots. It is strength 10. So there is a 99% chance you'll be wounding on twos if you're going after um, infantry units. It's only going to be things like um, tanks and other, other bigger vehicles where you're going to be hitting on threes. It is AP minus four, which is devastating. If you're within 12 inches, AP minus five, if you go on for that that stratagem at the top or that uh, dynasty at the top, which is which is mental, you ain't going to get a save against that unless you've got an invulnerable save, and it is D6 damage per hit. Absolutely brutal. And like it says, uh, if you're going to take it um, with your maximum, you're going to get three shots against units of six or more, which is Griffiths up in Space Marines. I mean, Space Marines, the new... Um, the new Space Marines uh, might come in bigger units of five. The the units at the minute that come in uh, like infiltrators and that only go in a squad of five. So you're not going to get maximum shots, but um, the intercessors now they have bolt pistols and chainsaws and people might run them as a squad of ten. Very true. And we've got Necron Warriors. They look so good, man. The, the, the pain scheme, the brassiness, the worn out, decayed look. So cool. Love these. Go online and find more pics of these guys. Well worth a look. So, the mainstay of many Necron army lists is the Humble Warrior. Uh, like most units in the new edition, Necron, Necron Warriors will be increase, increasing in points, more specifically to 12 points per model. Okay? but they're still comfortably uh, outnumbered Space Marines of the battlefield. Not only that, but you'll soon be uh, able to equip your Necron Warriors with a Gauze Reaper, which trades range for increased hitting power. Combine these deadly new weapon uh, options with the Mephrid Dynasty code, and you'll be cutting your enemies down in droves with a devastating point-blank fire. So the Gauze Reaper okay, is range 14 inches, uh, type is rapid fire one. It is strength five. AP minus two, and just one damage. But what, like I said, at the top, uh, if you're in half range within seven inches, it's going to be rapid fire. So that'll be two shots instead of one because you're within half range. Strength five. It'll be AP minus three, and one damage, which means most things are going to be not get a save or saving on sixes. Marines are going to be getting saves on sixes or fives or invulnerable saves. That is a really punchy weapon to cut through to cut through space marine power armor. That's really good. I would be tempted to take that over the normal weapon, if I'm being honest. But let me know what you think, guys. Uh, so thanks, Werner. Uh, what units will you be adding to the Necron uh, phalanxes? Have you already been adding some in anticipation of the new edition? Let us know on the Warhammer 40,000 Facebook page, Instagram, and on Twitter using the hashtag new 40 k And that's it. Um, but instead of going on and putting your comments on there, guys, you should be going on the comments below and then your comments below. Um, let us know what you think. Out of the article that you've seen today, what is um, your most... Or what do you think is, is, is the best buff that's been released today? There's only a few on there, but the ones are on there are really good. The, they suit the Necrons. 
I like the way they're worded. I like the way they work in conjunction with anything, with everything else. Quality. I can't pick a fault with them. But let me and Carl uh, know what you think. Are you a current Necron player? Do you have a Necron Force? What are you going to be changing? Are you new to the game? Have you never had Necrons before, like me? Um, are you looking to start Necrons? Now the Necrons seem to be uh, one of the top tier factions, one of the top tier armies. Any comments, guys, let us know below. And when we see the comments, we will happily reply to all of them. And if you've watched this video all the way through, thank you very much. Um, it's, it's most useful when, they, when everyone watches the video from start to end. Thank you. If you've been um, captivated, interested, and you like what you've heard, hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button, guys. It really does make a difference. We will be turning this channel into something special, and you can be part of it from the very beginning. So hit it now. Hit that like button as well, just to give us a thumbs up, just to show us the confidence boost. Um, and we'll do our best to keep putting our videos every single day, as long as there is more content to be reviewed on the Warhammer community post. And um, that's going to be it. There's another short video today, guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching. This has been Kel on behalf of 40 Call saying uh, keep safe, look after yourselves, and until next time, we'll see you all later.